Ah, Christmas. The most jolly time of the year. Hated by some, loved by others. But is it really the wholesome, cozy tradition that some of us dreamt of as kids? Or is it a dystopian marketing scheme devised by our greedy overlords with an undertone of demonic energy? Who knows? However, I think a lot of people make assumptions about Christmas based off the very flashy, commercial, popular American Christmas culture. And they fail to take into account a lot of the hilarious, unique, old traditions any other countries celebrate Jesus Jesus' birthday with. So today I'm going to be walking you guys through some of the most insane, hilarious, out of pocket Christmas traditions from all around the globe and hopefully you'll have a clearer, more rounded opinion on Xmas by the time this video is up. First up we've got Austria and Bavaria. That's right, nestled in the beautiful alpine snowy hills full of Christmassy wooden cabins, you can find one of the most bone chilling, most petrifying Christmas traditions in the world. Krampus, a terrifying horned demon who runs around beating children children who've been naughty but this is just all some silly old folklore right no dudes literally patrol around austrian cities and towns at night ringing cowbells and smacking the shit out of anyone they think looks even the tiniest bit naughty and there's absolutely no monetary incentive to be krampus apparently austrian dudes just be out here getting shit faced and anonymously terrorizing their village and these dudes do not hold back the krampus has actually got so violent and out of hand a few years ago that you now actually need a Krampus license if you want to attack unarmed Austrian civilians wearing a fucking terrifying outfit. Talking about fucking terrifying outfits, Wales has these dead goat men called Mari Lewid, and instead of patrolling around drunk beating up children, they just shout insults at any passerbys instead. And apparently, if you invite this geezer into your house, you get blessed with good luck, and more importantly, you spare getting roasted. Maybe if you got rid of the told you ye ask that you got you get some pictures on your coat better yet, maybe Tanisha call your dog and said she had to stop him with a brain surgeon all or she and next up, Hans Trap. No, he's not a German drill rapper. That's right, it's another very scary traditional Christmas geezer. This time in these villages in France. And I'm gonna read you this guy's official description, okay? According to Alsatian lore, Hans Trap was a local man well known for his greed and unscrumptual. He used witchcraft and deals with the devil to become rich. But after being excommunicated from the Catholic Church, he lost his wealth and social standing. He took to roaming the countryside, disguised as a scarecrow. At some point, Hans Trapp became consumed with the idea of tasting human flesh. He lured a shepherd boy to his death, then cooked him over a fire. Before Hans Trapp could take his first bite, however, God, finally feeling that things had gone too far, struck him with lightning. What Hans Trapp died, but he returns sometimes on Christmas to go from door to door looking for children to abduct and turn into a Christmas stew. Bro, what type of French psychopathic weirdo actively wants to cosplay as this dude? You're telling me someone really wants to publicly dress up as a child murderer cannibal and knock on the local community's doors? I feel like it's the same type of guys that do war recreations and choose to be on the bad side. Like, I know you're just pretending, bro, but I feel like you've had to make some mental preparations to act this convincingly, you know? Yeah, they do some weird shit in the mountains, man. This is why lowlanders are based. Oh, wait, wait a second. So when I first heard about this Dutch Christmas tradition called Black Pete, I thought I'd give it the benefit of the doubt, you know? The idea is this dude Pete is like Santa, right? He climbs down the chimney, drops off the presents, fucks off. In this, as you can imagine, quite strenuous process, Big Pete gets a bit of soot on his face from all the chimney business. So that's why it's called Black Pete. He's just got a little bit of coal residue on his rosy jolly cheeks nothing wrong with that and uh then i saw a picture but i mean that's a lot of soot you know and uh completely coincidentally this guy pete also developed some comically large lips in that chimney and some uh suspiciously dark curly hair for a dutchman hmm it's not all quite adding up but i heard they're actually fixing up this controversy once and for all they're finally making a uh, positive change shaping dutch christmas to be a lot less controversial of a holiday getting rid of all the problems people have with it that's right now we've got yellow pete 
brown peat and LGBT peat, bro. Oh, you couldn't just dab a little tiny bit of soot on each cheek and call it a day. <laughs> I'm gonna run through some quick honorable mentions. In Sweden, we got this little terrifying dude we put under the Christmas tree. Or it, it might just be my family. I'm not, I'm not too sure. For some reason, we also watched the same 1970s dubbed Disney cartoon compilation every Christmas. Uh, don't ask. And in Yevle, they got a big hay goat that gets burnt down every year. In Japan, they eat KFC for Christmas dinner. Could have picked so many better fast food options, man. Why the hell would you pick KFC? In Australia, they still get Christmas trees and do all the winter traditional stuff, even though it's the boiling hot middle of summer over there. Which is a bit like Brazil, where this poor geezer Santa has to get in his full North Pole durable outfit and deliver presents by boat in 30 degree heat during the highest humidity of the whole year. I also asked my Georgian friend Gatsu about their weird Christmas traditions and he just sent this to me. So, uh, take from that what you will, I guess. But also, it turns out Georgians have their own unique type of Christmas tree. Man, they just want to be counted as Europe so bad that they're even making their Christmas trees Aryan. God damn, them boys are really committed to proving they invented the white race. <laughs> They've even got their own completely white version of Santa. Now, I didn't have any idea what they did in this part of the world for Christmas, but I just had the feeling it would be funny. So I thought I'd turn to the expert himself, living ironically in Europe, who very generously wrote me up some key points regarding their weird traditions in Serbia and Romania. White people always tend to do weird shit, like put mayo on their chicken instead of seasoning, create kids bop songs, so it's no surprise that they also do some weird shit for Christmas as well. Let me ask you, how would you celebrate the birth of your God's child and your saviour of eternal damnation? Maybe go to church, light up a candle, say a prayer, right? Something like that. Well, in Romania, they actually embrace their final form and turn into drunk dancing bears. This custom is popular in northeastern Romania near cities like Yash and Suceva. Centuries ago, it was common practice for the locals of the villages and towns to go and kill bears, then crawl into their skin and dance throughout the neighborhood to ward off evil spirits. This is before Christianity, so at the time it was believed that different animals possessed different powers and could protect people from danger, sort of like the primitive version of Power Rangers. The bear's superpower was good luck and warding off evil spirits. And they still do this. So if you ever find yourself in northeastern Romania during Christmas time, don't go full Joe Rogan panic mode if you see a bunch of bears dancing towards you. Meanwhile, in Serbia, there's a whole shtick about cutting up an oak tree the day before Christmas and then on Christmas Eve at midnight, burning it as the largest bonfire you've ever witnessed in front of the church. This tradition is really deep and the Serbian Wikipedia page is longer than your average leftist meme. So to keep it short, within the Serbian Orthodox Church, is believed that the preparation of the oak branch brings good luck and happiness to the household. The guy who lights this gigantic bonfire then slaps it with a branch to cause sparks to fly. The larger the sparks from the flame, the greater the luck. Alongside this, a meal is prepared as an offering for the dead, which consists of cooked wheat, honey, and wine. Bro, if I was a dead person, I'd be pissed. At least chuck me a couple pigs in blankets, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, last but not least, we got the UK, where our citizens have a tradition of accidentally burning their houses down due to them trying to drape, stack and show off as many piercingly bright festive lights and neon Christmas decorations on the exterior of their homes as possible. However, they also try and save as much money as possible while still achieving this effect, leading to terribly built cheap light bulbs generating so much excess heat that the festive season becomes quite a busy time for firefighters. This British Christmas light phenomenon is kind of comparable with the English flag hanging competition. Here are some of the finest examples of that. Essentially, you've just got to outdo your neighbours, otherwise you'll be the inferior beta of the cul-de-sac. But let's just say you're an innocent civilian who doesn't participate in this bright flashing neon civil war, but you live next to a geezer who takes his Christmas lights seriously. Best believe you ain't sleeping a wink. In Britain, Christmas jumpers are very popular as well. People spend way, 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 way too much money on these just to wear them for a few weeks. Because realistically, if you wore one of these Christmas jumpers any time of the year, except November 
15th to December 31st, you'd genuinely be seen as a psychopath. The weirdest thing is when people give Christmas jumpers as a Christmas gift and you've got 10 hours to wear it before the time's up. <laughs> Another phenomenon that happens at Christmas is everyone down the pub switches from their beer of choice to a stout. As soon as those sparkly lights come out and Mariah Carey starts regularly playing on the radio, everyone for some reason switches to Guinness, even if they hate Guinness. And talking about non-British things that British people indulge in during Christmas, we have the pinnacle of every town centre during December, the heart of Britain's Christmas cheer, the German markets. That's right, from mid-November to late December, Anglos go back to their Germanic roots. Yeah, we have entirely German-themed Christmas markets that are really popular all over the UK. Here you can buy some insanely overpriced gack that you will never utilise once in your life. You can also spend 13 quid on a f***ing pint and £8.50 on a f***ing bratwurst and consume this godly pairing whilst listening to some random German guy sing English Christmas songs. No lie, I was in Birmingham Christmas Market last week and those were the exact prices and yes, they literally just got some random dude from Stuttgart to sing Christmas songs on a stage in the centre of the market and he wasn't famous or anything, no. He couldn't even really sing that well. The only attraction is that he was German. Yeah, that's right, Brexit has made the sight of economically prospering Europeans so rare that when a random German enters our country, he's literally a tourist attraction. It's pretty insane though how much money these markets generate. I mean, sometimes you can even catch tourists from around the world that have travelled to some random ass dilapidated British town to see the German market. Bruv, go to Germany! That's like flying all the way to Houston to visit an Irish pub. Why the f*** would you do that? They literally don't know how to pour beer into a glass and they'll probably do some blasphemous thing like put ice in your beer. Yeah, anyway, I just feel sorry for these poor tourists who've spent their money travelling to see a traditional German market just to end up in Brom watching a bunch of pissed up black country geezers belting out some Brommy parody of Last Christmas whilst nicking sweets out the stalls when the poor worker who's missing Christmas with his family for this is turned the other way. And I thought, what better way to finish this video off than with a tier list? At the top, we've got the most psychotic traditions. At the bottom, we've got the most normal vanilla traditions. I added America as a reference point and boom, there you have it. As per usual, feel free to argue about this in the comments. By the way, this video was made pretty quickly just for the occasion, but you can expect full quality videos very soon. Merry Christmas. Jingle bell, jingle bell.